APIs are everywhere. We use them every day, whether we realize it or not, and we can't escape them. But what are they? In this video, I want to explain what they are in simple terms. And by the end, you'll understand the basic concepts of an API and why they are so amazing. You'll also walk away with some simple examples. Before I continue this video, I wanted to give a special thanks to recent subscribers. The last video took me 10 to 12 hours to make, and the likes, comments, and subscriptions really encourage me to keep putting out videos. So thank you. So what is an API? An API provides rules and tools for a piece of software to interact with another piece of software to unlock some given functionality. Software is a fancy way of saying code running on a computer. Stick with me for a few minutes as I break it down. Before I go into more detail, I want to point out that there's two common types of API. The first is a backend server. A client sends a server a message or a request, and the server responds with information back or triggers an action. The second type is a software module or package. You can import someone else's code and use their code's functionality in your own code. For example, image to PDF or PDF to text conversion. For the purpose of this video, we are going to focus on the backend server version of an API. I also think it's more relevant and interesting and something you could start using even if you don't know how to code today. Let's first look at the rules part of the definition. Rule number one, you usually need an API key. An API key is just a unique ID that a company gives you to make sure the requests that you send are coming from your account. Make sure to keep this safe and don't share it. This API key protects the API against abuse. The company can use it to make sure you don't send too many requests and overload their server. It also helps the API owner keep track of who is calling them for whatever reason. In case there's an issue or they need to reach out to you, they know who is sending the requests. Rule number two, you usually have a limit on how many times you can call an API. API. This is called a rate limit. It's usually described in terms of TPS or transactions per second. And it's also usually combined with a concept called throttling. Throttling is when the software blocks your requests if you've sent too many too fast. You may have heard of a DDoS attack in the news. It's when a bunch of requests are sent to an API with the intent to overload and crash the server to make it unusable. And this is often with political or some sort of activist motivation behind it. Rule number three, APIs often have free and paid options options. Like we mentioned in the server video, servers cost money to run, and since APIs are the software running on servers, these cost money to operate as well. One of the challenges a company has that sells access to their API is managing the cost of operating the API versus managing the cost they charge their users. This is not always an easy calculation. If it's too high, you miss out on customers, and if it's too low, you don't make enough money to stay afloat as a company. Recent examples in the news have been Twitter and Reddit. They have radically increased their prices, and it has caused a lot of backlash. Users that created apps before can't integrate with their APIs because they're too expensive for them to afford. But what happens if you don't abide by the rules of the API? Either you get an error message, like an invalid request or a validation error, or maybe a throttled request, too many requests per second, or worse, your API can get revoked. Or even worse still, if you do something illegal, you could have legal consequences to deal with. Make sure to check their policies and guidelines when you sign up for an API. So we talked about some of the main rules an API can establish. What about the tools? Tools are the functionality your API provides. Let's look at some functionality examples. Take a nutrition app, for example, that provides barcode scanning of food labels. You scan the barcode, it sends the barcode to an API, and it returns the nutritional and the macronutrient information automatically back to your app. Driving directions, both Apple and Google provide an API that will give someone driving directions from one place to another anywhere in the world. Or what about AI models? OpenAI has released ChatGPT, which is an API attached to a chat app. All you need to do is send a simple text message and you get access to an advanced large language model. If it's not crystal clear from these examples, APIs are incredibly powerful and versatile. All backend servers have some common tools built in. They can all receive a request. While there are lots of types of requests, I wanna zoom in on HTTP requests because they are the most common. Imagine you have a food tracking app and you want to log a meal. You can send a get request to the meal endpoint and you can get a meal you've already created. You can send a post request to the meal endpoint and you can create a new meal. You can send a put request to a meal endpoint and you can change or correct something on a meal. You can send a delete request to a meal endpoint and you can delete a meal you don't want to use anymore. Get, post, put, and delete. 
These are the four main HTTP verbs or actions you can make when you send an HTTP request. I plan to do a video on HTTP requests. Let me know if that sounds interesting. So who gets to use an API? Who gets to use these tools? Who are the users? Underlying an API is at least three parties involved. The first is the designer, maintainer, and host of the API. These can be different parties or all the same. See my video on servers if you haven't already. Number two, the direct user is the user interacting with the API. This is the programmer that calls the API. They write the line of code that says meal.save or meal.create new meal, for example. And lastly, there's the end user, which might be you. This is the person that presses the button on their phone and it triggers an API under the hood, which calls the server. Create new meal, for example. That's a quick overview of APIs. I hope it was helpful. If you're interested in learning how to build one from scratch in code, let me know in the comments. Or if there's another topic you'd like a what is video on, let me know. As always, I'll leave some helpful links in the description and thanks for watching.